What is up teachers on fire and Google Classroom educators. Today I want to show you how to log into Khan Academy, create a class and then post an assignment on Khan Academy on Google Classroom. Let's go. The first thing we're going to do is log into Khan Academy. So we're going to hit this login button here and you've got lots of login options, which is great. I'm going to log in with Google and I'm going to choose my teachers on fire account. The reason is partly that I want to keep this completely separate from my school stuff and my students there I want to keep that entirely private. So here I am in Khan Academy and one of the most important features that you should be aware of here is this uh, is this profile home and in particular the teacher dashboard. So that gives us this screen here and it shows you your classes. You can see that I have one class based on my Google Classroom and I, uh, my teachers on fire Google Classroom and I have another class that has no students at all. We're going to use both of these in a moment. Now, here is my teachers on fire Google Classroom. Imagine that this is your school Google Classroom. Uh, because that's the way we're going to be using it today. I'm a teacher and these other educators that have willingly volunteered to be my demo guinea pigs. Thank you so much. And uh, they are the students. So to start my Google class, or pardon me, to start my Khan Academy class, I'm going to uh, hit this button, add new class. And if you've never done this before, you have no classes in this view. This will be empty here. So I'm going to hit add new class. And we will call this a demo test class. You also have the option here, and I'm not going to go through it, but you also have the option to import your class from Google Classroom. And when you click connect a Google Classroom account, and I want to be careful here <laughs> because if I go through with this, it will trigger. Yeah, if I hit next here, it's going to trigger an email to these educators, and I don't want to do that. But you can see you'll have a drop down of all your Google Classroom classes, and you can select the one that you want to sync with Khan Academy. But I'm going to go back to this, this uh, option here, enter your class name, and this is not going to reach out to anyone by itself. Then you have add courses for your class. Now, not to worry, they're just trying to get you thinking about wh which directions you want your students to go in. So you can always change this, all right? You can go back and change these selections, but let's choose computer programming. And uh, you can see there's just a wealth of options here. Now, how would you like to add your students? Again, you can select invite your Google Classroom and then it'll walk you through the connecting and syncing your Google Classroom. Again, I don't want to, whoops, I don't want to do that right now because that's going to, uh, that's going to trigger an email to these poor educators. Don't want to do that. But you've got other options as well. And this is the one that I like. It says students join with a class link. Here's what it looks like. Khan Academy creates a specialized URL and I, I'm never quite certain on the student and I think they will need this class code. So let's keep that in mind. We're going to copy this URL and then you're going to go over to Google Classroom. Remember, this is my Google Classroom and I'm going to make a post right here. So this is kind of what I've posted for educators. You're going to adjust this a little bit for your students, but please join my Khan Academy classroom. In case you're asked for it, the class code is, and that's where I would put this right here, just let them know, and then drop this specialized URL right here, and uh, and in they will come. And so your students will come flooding into your Khan Academy class. Now, what does it look like to actually post an assignment? And trust me, by the way, before we move right to posting, your students will get in quite easily. I work in middle school, they will appear quite quickly, but you wanna be careful that they are actually in your class. So some keeners may try to log in using your, their school email or their personal email, if, if that is allowed within your current work environment, and they may not be in your class necessarily. So you wanna keep an eye on that class roster. I'm a little reluctant to show you my class roster for the other class that I mentioned of educators because it will contain their email addresses. 
So I may click on this and then edit the video to make sure that you can't see their email addresses. I do want to protect their privacy, but let's open up my actual class of nine educators. Here we go. All right, so when I did open the class, it showed their email addresses. I'm cutting that out of the demo because you can't see their email addresses, uh, but I did click next, this button over here, assign. Okay, and that's where we want to go from here. So I, the computer programming is showing up because I selected that course. Now again, I can add other courses. You're not, it's not written in stone. You can, you can adjust your course, course load and direction as you go. So that's no problem. But let's say that I want to teach these educators or I want these educators to learn. They're not really learning from me. They're learning from Khan Academy. Uh, JavaScript. And so uh, as I unpack these, I can handpick the activities and outcomes. So I want them to watch this video about what is programming. Khan Academy will track their progress for me and then do some reading here. Uh, no responses required. And because it's a keener bunch, I'm going to say they can take on the drawing basics as well. So they will do a talk through called Making Drawings with Code. They'll read another article. And then they've got three challenge exercises where they actually have to do some honest to goodness coding and programming with JavaScript. Did I just say honest to goodness? That's uh, that's a throwback. Okay. So as soon as I assign this, now remember this is going to go to some real life educators, but as soon as I assign this, uh, I can set the start date and time due date let's give them a, a good long time for this so february 25th and, and they certainly don't need to do this there's no pressure on them this is for modeling purposes but i'm going to assign these seven activities now here's the thing to keep in mind as a google classroom educator i want all of my learning activities to show up there and that's the next step that i want to take you to Something just popped up on the Khan Academy screen that I do want to show you as well. And that is the scores tab. Now, if you are in a gradeless environment like me, you may sort of grimace or recoil when you see scores. We're not too interested in scores in that traditional sense, but this is a very, very helpful view in terms of progress. Okay. So in terms of showing how far the students have gone or how many skills they have mastered, how many activities they have completed. This is a great view and it will update in, it will update in real time, but you'll need to refresh your screen to get the most. So I guess it's not updating in real time, but yes, it is. I, I, whatever it, it's, you know what I mean? It, it, you'll refresh your screen, but it will once you do that, it will show you the most up to date results in terms of their completion and achievement. And that that's great because that means you're not arguing with students, but how many activities they've completed and how many they have left to do. All right. So going back to Google Classroom, I have not created the assignment for this demo yet because I sort of want to give you a sense of how I would approach this. All right. So Khan Academy just created that topic. I'm going to create an assignment and I'll just walk you through my workflow and you can do this differently if you like, but here are the, going back to assign, here are the activities that I've given these students. So what I sometimes do is I will just screenshot the actual uh, titles for students just to make it, remember I work with middle schoolers, right? So visual supports are helpful and I, I just wanna save that and get ready to post that uh, in the assignment just so they are crystal clear on what is going on here. So bear with me as I find this file on my desktop. I've got quite a few images on my desktop right now. There it is. So I'm going to attach that to the assignment. Yes, yes, okay. I am familiar with Google Classroom, but thank you for those tutorials. So we've got a visual reminder and I also want to post intro to programming. See, these are sort of the two activity groups I'm posting today, intro to programming and drawing basics. So let's start with intro to programming drawing basics. All right. And then I might post some very gentle kind of instruction 
all along. The con and horse. You begin to learn. Cody code isn't JavaScript. Now, obviously, there should be some preloading and setup work going on before you just jump right into a coding and programming course. And I like to begin with a lesson on why coding and programming. Why is that even important? And really a focus on the computational thinking skills that supersede the actual coding and programming language. This language may change. The computational thinking skills, problem solving, tolerance for ambiguity, those things will not go away. Now, I like to attach a learning target here, always keeping in mind what it is we are doing and why. So that, uh, thinking about Shannon Shinko, that learning target should be uh, task agnostic. So when I'm developing a learning target, I like to use some language that comes from the curricular documents here in British Columbia. This is the 8 ADST curriculum. And so I'm going to use some of this language over here in connection with computational thinking. And let's craft a learning target. So I can use or apply. So in the Google Classroom side, we want to make sure this is ungraded. We're not giving a percentage grade and we're going to give a due date of February the 4th. Actually, I'll make it the same due date. This is important. Actually, we want to make it the same due date as the Khan Academy uh, due date and we'll put it properly in Khan Academy and it would be helpful to attach a Khan Academy link as well for your students. You know, just these little things, just to connect the dots, make it that much easier. So we're going to log out, just to make sure I get this uh, URL right, and khanacademy.org, that's where they want to go. And remember, they want to, you want to make sure your students are actually in your Khan Academy class before they get too far in their work, or it's not going to show up. It's not going to be synced with your class. You're not going to be able to see them. So we've got the link, we've got the screenshot of activities. Okay, so I showed you that it's really hard to grab this text. It's all hyperlinked. So as soon as I let go of the selection, it collapses, or as soon as I try to click, or do anything, it wants to jump. It's, uh, it's not possible. But I've discovered that if you go to the scores tab and you select this text here, these are the same outcomes, same learning activities. Copy these over into Google Classroom and that will actually work. So it depends on how fancy you want to be with your Google Classroom, but I always feel like over communication is better than under. So I like to make it look good for kids. So they're going to do it, but it's going to be one screaming, going for him, going for him, going Okay, and then one more thing, as I mentioned, we can set up a rubric. And in my context, we do not use scores, numbers, or percentages. So it really is very simple for the Khan Academy course. Really, all they are going to do, students are going to do is uh, make sure that they've completed each learning activity. Khan Academy will not let them through uh, from one lesson to the next. Pardon me, it will. Actually, it will let them through. But Khan Academy will not consider it complete. Let's, let's say that until it is properly and successfully mastered. And so let's say coding and programming. And really there's only proficient you completed all of the assignments of these. That's what you're demonstrating full efficiency on our network. So for them, we can say you did some of the assignments of these assignments successful and then we agree. And here's our own instructor to talk as well. So you can say you completed a few. Or let's go to say you completed me. I also need a longer training. We have to be clear about it. Yet. There's the positive, right? They they haven't done it yet. And here's where I want to ask, is there anything I can do to support your learning? You have another point on our proficiency scale, which is extending. They're not going to have, my students aren't going to have an opportunity to demonstrate extending skills in this module 
or at least not within the Khan Academy environment, but any student who, let's say, wanted to step outside of the platform and actually write something in JavaScript, that would be, that would be a great way to demonstrate extending proficiency. So there is my rubric, and I'm going to save this. And I'm also, one other little thing that I think is important, I'm also going to number this assignment as number one. And that may, just makes Google Classroom activities easier to refer to when you've got a one, a two, a three, and so on. You can say, go back to activity one or activity two or whatever much easier to refer to. So I think what I've done is created a good looking Google Classroom post. That took a while and I may need to edit down that video a little bit, but hopefully that walks you through my process. And the key is that, you know, you've assigned it in Khan Academy. You've given this assignment. And by the way, students can view it. They have their name up here. They can, and I think it appears as student home or student dashboard. And so when they click that, they will see a list of everything that you've assigned and what they have completed. So you've done that, but it's not enough. If you're using Google Classroom well, it's not enough to just post it on a third party like Khan Academy and leave it and assume that they will see it. They won't, they will not. And so you need to make sure that it is on Google Classroom as well. I went through it a little bit on the slow side, but that gives you an idea of how to set that up. And then of course, as you know, once that is done once you can reuse and customize and adjust going forward that is my demonstration for today how to set up a class on khan academy and how to connect that with your google classroom and begin posting activities on your google classroom i know this tutorial won't help everyone but i do hope it helps you and probably if you've come to this video looking for these kinds of solutions that's exactly what you needed so i hope this was helpful if you did find some value here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That's the number one way that you can show support. And I'll see you next week right here at Teachers on Fire. Bye-bye.